My next guest is going to be back in action. Maverick MMA 29, September 28th. It is Skylar Mahler joining me here on the program. Skylar, how are you doing, man? Doing well. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, Yeah, and and a big fight here. And we'll we'll talk about this in a second, but this is the first time you and I have had a chance to talk. How did you get involved in combat sports? Where did this journey start for you? Uh, Grandpa did um, boxing for the Marines and then just did the tough man a few times and had a hell of a blast doing it. And they said, you want to fight for real? And that's how I got into it. When did you know this was more than just a hobby and something you actually wanted to pursue? Was it that first amateur fight? What what sort of led you to that decision? Honest, um, honestly, you know, not trying to be the rock or anything. I have more fun fighting than I do fucking. Okay. I'll yeah. take your word for it. Yeah. It's just a okay. different adrenaline rush. It makes me feel alive, you know? Okay. I like it. I like it. Um, and so were you like watching MMA as well, or were you always just sort of training and then maybe got into that after? Like, uh, take me through, like, like I'm assuming you watch MMA. I follow it. I highlight other fighters and stuff like that. And, you know, I've, you know, I straight fought with friends and shit and just in school. But, like, from, I didn't actually start training until I was 18. I always thought oh, okay. I handled myself in the streets. I thought, it was, you know, it was whatever. And I got into it, and I got my ass beat a lot as an amateur. Boxing, kickboxing, I hold my own because I got, like, insane amount of strength. But there's nothing compared to forming technique. I was, like, two and five as an amateur. And I'm like, something needs to change. Yeah, and it's worked out well for you in the, in the pro ranks as well. Um, along with fighting, what else do you do for a living? Uh, what's paying the bills for you right now? Yeah, factory work, maintenance. Is it's it pretty shit, manageable but... with, with, with the fight career? Are they, they cool about yeah. it at all, like in terms of your training and everything? I mean, yeah, for the most part, they allow me to do it. You know, I have vacation that I could put in or I can just do leave of absence. You know, they let me kind of float around. They support it oh. for the most part. Tell me how this came together with you fighting for Maverick. Uh, I did a amateur fight for him like three four years ago i fought josh and when i weighed 145 pounds and he just got in touch with me about it and i said fuck yeah i'd love to i'd love to come down again because i knew willie Siska a few years ago okay yeah nice connection there from the amateur days uh what do you know about uh, jared rivera obviously making his pro debut so probably not a ton of tape out there but how do you feel like you match up against him here uh, i feel like it's gonna be a hell of a fight i saw that he trained with gordon ryan and that's fucking awesome he looks like a tough opponent and i feel like he's gonna be a hell of a brawl and I hope he stands and bangs with me some, but like, I mean, it's MMA. So whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Uh, tell me a bit about your training camp, uh, who you're working with, who've been some of the main training partners helping you get ready for this fight. Um, I've been training with Jason Cable up at Gracie Allegiance up in Zanesville, Ohio, uh, for the last few months now. I've been down at VO2 with Joey Stutter for, and then some stuff happened, switch shifts with work. I had to move, find a different location. Being on second shift makes things kind of fucking difficult. But now I got pretty solid time. Gym works for everything, even over time. I can train pretty well with them about four or five is, days a week. Nice. Is, is it a good variety of training partners as well? You know, probably pros, amateurs, a little bit of everything. Um, it, it bounces around every day. There's like four to eight people different. There's some new people. Some people in there are extremely skilled and some are new, but they always give a different aspect towards the fighting. So if I heard you correctly there, you said you fought at 145 as an amateur? Yeah. Yeah, about so four you're fighting years, a middleweight yeah. now, which is a little bit different. Uh, so how how's the weight cut for you these days? Uh, I sit around 200, 195, 200. And okay. 10, 10, 15 pounds ain't much for me. Like, I've, I was about 145, 155 most of my life. I ended up having a kid, got my wife's cravings, and I just kind of got fat. And then I got back into it and turned the fat mostly to muscle. So it's pretty pretty well-rounded now. I'd say so. That, that's good. Uh, your corner, who's going to be in the cage with you for this fight? Who will uh, who'll be cornering you? Uh, Honestly, I don't know. I was trying to get Jason Cable to go down for me. I was seeing if Giovanni Alvarez would be down there. Personally, I have no idea yet. Okay, fair enough. And uh, how do you see this fight playing out on September 28th? What's your prediction? I'm trying to get a comeback from my last fight with Thomas Gant. That fight, he, he didn't bump gloves with me and he got in my head a little bit. So I was kind of like sad, disappointed. He got to, you know, fuck with me mentally. So I didn't get a fight how I normally fought. And with him... You know, no disrespect to him. He wants to bump gloves before the fight. That's cool. It's just after that one time where I felt like I got cheap shotted. No disrespect to him or anybody else ever fight from now on, but I just can't trust anybody. Yeah. You know? That's a shitty thing to happen for sure. So, but like playing it's... out overall, I feel like, you know, I think I go to the ground regardless. Cause I mean, with him training with Gordon Ryan, being real round of jujitsu and all of his fights going most of the distance, be grounded pounds a loss. So I feel like it'd be a helpful brawl whether it's standing up or on the ground, back and forth. 
Where does the wind put you here? Um, you know, again, I know it's about, you know, you're early in your career, so I know it's about activity. It's about getting the right opportunities. Is it just take it fight to fight uh, as far as what's next after this? Um, it's more like taking it fight to fight. Personally, I'm trying to get in the bare knuckle, but they haven't accepted me yet. You know, because, like, I just always wanted to do it. Like, it seems fucking awesome to me. And as right now, like, the fighting helps pay all my bills. Like, it helps substantially. And as of right now, yeah, it's just fight to fight. You must like, too, that there's more bare knuckle stuff going on. You know, at the beginning, it was just BKFC. Now there's like Game Bread. There's so many other, um, you know, uh, promotions that are that are doing it. You got to be happy there. There's a lot of up opportunities now out there. Yeah, it keeps blowing up. And that's awesome. Dad thinks I'm retarded for wanting to do it. But like when I fought Gant, he elbowed me about 80 times. Then knocked me out, then split me open. And, you know, I'm like, what's the difference between 80 elbows and bare knuckle boxing? Okay. And, and what do you think of Conor McGregor getting involved in BKFC? That's obviously going to bring more eyeballs. That's it's kind of crazy, honestly. I mean, as cool as how hell he blew up too. He's probably sitting around about two twenty five, two thirty five. Like he got massive. I mean, his neck and shoulders are all fused together now. How big he got, but it's definitely gonna make it blow up. As many people that hate him and love him, either way, it brings attention to the sport. Yeah, they're watching regardless. That's the thing with Connor. You love him, you hate him. It doesn't matter. People are talking about him. It's sort of a big name there. Um, so as far as like long term goals uh, in, in your career, is it is it, you know, making money with BKFC and, and doing the bare knuckle stuff? Or do you ever want to make it to the UFC? Is that is that a long term goal of yours? Bare minimum Bellator, LF, you know, LFA, one championship. Like that's my bare minimum goal. Bare mm -hmm. knuckle something I want to get big in and get like get into because like I'm a brawler. I can stand and bang with anybody. When I did my pro boxing match, Joey Turk had me by like eight inches and damn near 60 pounds. You know, we stand and bang for about two rounds. So bare knuckle sounds awesome to me, but MMA, I want Bellator minimum. Like I want to make a career out of it. You know, fuck the factory work. Like that shit makes training hard as hell. Find a part-time job and train as consistent as possible. Okay. Like it. Uh, what about outside of fighting? I know you're a busy guy. You got the factory work. You're training for this fight. Um, you know, obviously you got a lot going on. Now you're a family man. Uh, do you get any downtime? Is there any other hobbies you have outside of fighting and training? Despite being like five foot eight and two hundred pounds, you know, I got anime tats, so like I'm kind of a fucking comic con nerd. Nice. I do bowling okay. and golf. Oh, you golf? Uh, that's yeah. my, that's my world right there. I love golfing. How do you, do you still get to golf during camp? It's probably tough with your schedule, right? Uh, weekends. I golf about every other weekend, every weekend. And I do bowling tournaments with my cousin and shit. I got like a 200 average. Pretty nice. Made some money off of it just for shits and giggles. That's cool. You sound like a competitive guy. Like you need stuff to, to keep yourself occupied, right? Like if you're doing multiple things, I think that's awesome. Yeah, I, ADHD is real bad. So I like I'll pace around while talking. My wife, it drives my wife fucking crazy. My kids the same way. You know, I'll be at work. If shit's down and broke, I'm just fucking, I'm doing something. I have to. Yeah, I'm the same way, man. Uh, and, and making time for interviews, and I really appreciate it, Skylar. Uh, it's uh, Maverick MMA 29, September 28th. That's going to be live on Spectation Sports, so if you can't make the event, go check it out there. Skylar, if there's anyone you want to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Uh, I don't have any sponsors. I just want to thank my friends and family for supporting me and helping me push it through and get getting this far in my life and career.